Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is time for your Saturday sit rep. Uh, as always, I will go through the continents in alphabetical order. I got a busy day today, so this one will be a short one. I'll be right back and we can kind of roll through what's going on in the world. And uh, just hang on just a second. Okay, so I had a couple of interesting ones uh, that I thought were relevant, and they're both, two of them are occurring in Africa, and Africa is, starts with A, so that's typically the first continent I go with. Um, so essential online services unavailable as Kenya grapples with a cyber attack. This is reported by the East African. The outage of, of M-Pisa, I guess that's the company, services paralyzed operations across many sectors, including collection of revenue, such as parking fees by counties, putting into question Kenya's readiness for a full shift toward digital payments. CBDC is going everywhere, right? That digital payment. Now you notice last year, a bunch of these crypto guys, young guys, 20s, 30 year old tech executives, either got arrested or they were unalived. As they say on the other platform, uh, they had suicides, they had drowned, one magically fell out of a building even though the window wasn't broken, I, just weird shit, right? Because cartels don't like competition and governments are the biggest freaking cartel you'll ever find, but I digress. Anyway, this is something important because if there's no physical medium of exchange and the, and the exchanges go down, they get hacked, how do you trade? Right now you're dependent on a government that may not be functioning anymore. It's not even a question at that point of, oh, I'm here from the government and I'm here to help. The government won't know what the fuck's going on. So this is a, I said it last year when Sri Lanka started having economic issues. It's going to start with the small countries and it's going to go up the chain. And sure enough, we saw a lot of inflation, a lot of economic issues a year and a half ago. It's not that I'm some kind of genius. I'm looking at number patterns. As an engineer, that's one of the things we do. We analyze patterns you look for trends and then you make an assumption based on your most intelligent assessment of that trend and this is another one if you're seeing these small countries cratering their cyber currency their systems they're like it says here the questions kenya's readiness for full shift toward digital currency that's concerning because that could happen to us right uh and Niger, uh, General Chikani declares himself leader. So here we have another country in Africa that has a lot of essential minerals, a lot of rare elements, and they're in a coup. Sudan is still in a civil war. Uh, Sierra Leone and neighbors to fight piracy in the Gulf of Guinea. You're seeing a lot of that kind of stuff, right? As economies get worse, people cannot find legal employment, so they're gonna find illegal employment. So the uh, Niger story was from BBC and the Sierra Leone was ABC, Sierra Leone and neighbors to fight piracy in the Gulf of Guinea after a Chinese ship was hijacked. So even China's not immune. It's interesting that all these things are happening. Now South Africa, and I can't find the article at the moment, <clears throat> South Africa is reporting that a slew of freight trucks has been attacked, but there's no specific reason, but there are economic riots going on in the city. And in the cities and in the towns and South Africa has been struggling a lot but during 2020 when they were having the riots and the, the f food and economic you know issues and instability the cartels and the gangs and the, and the mafia whatever you call them in that country they were going well the cops the army the news and the public are all looking at the rioters so while they're doing that we're gonna go and raid all the food warehouses we're going to raid all the electronics warehouses we're going to bentley if you do that i'm kicking your butt bentley no sir and and bentley is in the news um apparently he thinks he's a german shepherd and ran off a big dog today. <laughs> you would think uh, but uh anyway now he's here he's like what dad i was doing things um in any case this is important because in an SHTF, and this is why I do these sit rips, in an SHTF were to happen here, the US, Canada, Mexico, and we're all tied together. 
So if Mexico has a major issue, U.S. and Canada are going to feel it. If Canada has an issue, the U.S. and Mexico are going to feel it. And that's fine. I have no problems buying stuff from Mexico or from Canada, so all of us are employed and all of us are stable. Um, they can keep the instability shit somewhere else. But in any case, important to note, when things go bad, it's not just marauders and rioters. You're going to literally see organized movements of cartels, mafia, MCs, whatever illegal entity are going to go and say, you know what, while well, everyone's tied up with that shit, let's go and steal all the guns from the gun stores. Let's go steal all the liquor. Let's steal all the medical supplies and then resell them on the black market. Then keep in mind, if the systems are down, the currencies are down, you no longer have cash to pay for things, but I will trade you amoxicillin for that ammunition. You kind of see it's almost like the gangs and the cartels are setting themselves up to get around this crypto thing. The only people who are going to struggle is us. And uh, that's why I put that this comments together the way I did, because here you have instability, you have organized crimes. During a riot, the organized crime is doing something completely over here. No one's seeing it until after the fact. And now they're having crypto issues in other countries, like the whole country is having system issues. So you see how that works. The cartels, the criminals that they claim are going to be better controlled by the use of like a CBDC, which is all great and dandy, are going to find a way around it. They always find a way around it. That is human nature. In the meantime, the only people who are going to struggle are going to be the people who actually obey the law, which is all of us. So I digress, went off on a rabbit trail, but this is really pissing me off, and that's probably going to require another another video. Okay, in Europe, hi Bentley, uh, China likely, likely supplying military, uh, Russian with military technology, that's Yahoo News, that's not a big surprise. Um, Germany, Russia, Ukraine, information where Russia actors identified and purported German video against Ukraine aid, again, they're going to, now this is disinformation. There's a difference. You have misinformation and disinformation. This is from uh, Europe Radio Liberty. Dude, stop it. Um, he's in a terror today. Uh, misinformation, if I have information that I believe is right and I purvey is right, but it's incorrect, I'm misinformed, right? And I'm misinforming you. Disinformation is when you deliberately go, you know what? I'm going to spin a bunch of lies to confuse the shit out of everyone. And while you're all wondering what's going on over here, I'm going to go and do something over there. Um, of course, the Russians are masters at this, and so are we. So, like, this information war, duh. You know, China is giving weapons to Russia, duh. Who the hell's monitoring that 2,000-mile border they have, right? Russia and Ukraine landmines left by Russian forces pose a threat, duh. Right? The Russians, when they retreated, they didn't just run away. I don't think we're getting the full picture of what's going on in Ukraine because the Russians, there seems to be a lot of little booby traps left for the Ukrainians as they run across, which is exactly what I would do if I was leading a military force and we were forced to retreat because of logistics or we were consolidating. I'd be like, all right, well, minefield the shit out of everything, put a bunch of snipers out and slow them down while we go and reorganize over here. So really, nothing really big there. Um, there's more tension with Israel and Lebanon, not really uh, a surprise there. Uh, and so now Bangladesh and India, Kolkata for setting up test centers at all immigration points in India, Bangladesh border to check the spread of dengue fever. Uh, they were making a big deal of this at the WHO. Um, dengue fever is a well-known, well-documented disease that's been around forever. And the vaccinations are 50, 60 years old. Like they got the science down right. Unlike some other medicines people have been taking that have like a whole six, eight months behind them. Now they got a whole year of science, right? We don't know what the long-term stuff is for the more recent magic potions, but the dengue fever uh, vaccine they figured out 50, 60 years ago and they tested it for eight years. So all the screw ups they did, they already got them figured out. So if you do go to Jungle areas, yellow fever and dengue, I highly recommend it because that medicine is tested and has been around for over half a century. Some other medicines, mm -mm, but that's just me. Uh, really folks, the big stories today, oh, here it is. South Africa truck burnings threaten regional supply chain. Uh, 
A series of violent attacks targeted 21 freight trucks transiting South Africa's main roadways in mid-July. While past instances of truck attacks have been linked to xenophobia, xenophobia or wider unrest, so it's interesting, and sorry about the cut there, somebody uh, sent me a text message in the middle of my video. Um, it's interesting to note that they really, whenever there's instability, you're gonna see criminal elements, not just in the street, right? Because in 2020, we were all watching the rioters, right? And they're just tearing up the city. Well, imagine if it got really bad and the cartel said, or the mafia, whoever take your bad guy, or some like psychotic people were just like, you know what, screw this. While they're all fighting over there, the cameras are over there, the news is over there, everyone's paying attention to those idiots throwing Molotovs at the cops. Let's go break into every freaking store and steal a bunch of guns or a bunch of drugs or a bunch of vehicles or whatever. And then we'll hide them and resell them later, right? That's how a cartel or a mafia would get around crypto. Oh. You would like this product? We will trade you an SUV for that. Oh, you want to work with us? Well, you give us these drugs, we will give you these AK-47s. You see what I'm saying? Um, barter at a large scale, a criminal scale, and that's not even talking about human trafficking and trafficking of kids and all that, which is some evil shit. But understand the criminals will always find a way around or they'll play the system. As our former president said, the system is rigged and the reason most people suffer for it is because we really don't know how the system works and we don't know what the write-offs are. So that's how they kind of screw us. But in any case, those three stories from Africa, super interesting this week. So I would look into them if you can. And again, they were on ABC, BBC, and uh, uh, Africa News. Um, understand these are all things that could happen if you have a civil collapse, even on a regional scale or a local scale, like a city or a county drops out, by the time reinforcements get there to stabilize, there are windows of opportunities where you will see organized crime hit specific stores, they will hit specific places while everyone else is in the streets, you know, burning down their own town. So good lessons to learn this week. Um, take that with a grain of salt, doesn't affect us directly, so I wouldn't panic about it at all, but I want you guys to think about what if that happened in my area? How am I set up for it? Have I reinforced my door? Do I have proper setups in my house? Do I carry, can I carry? If I cannot carry a firearm, what can I carry that's an option for me? Things to think about, just some lessons learned. The best thing we can do is to learn from other people's hardships so that if it happens to us, we've at least got a plan in our head and we're not caught completely flat-footed. Until next time, guys, I'm going to cut this one out. Uh, be good, be safe, be careful. Uh, today, we've got Farmer's Market Gun Show and then this big outdoor market thing that basically takes up an entire farm field. For those of you in Texas, Louisiana, and Oklahoma, it's like a baby version of Round Top, but in this quasi-desert I live in now. Anyway, we will go see what goodies are out there. I'm on the hunt for a rifle sling, and I'm also looking for cast iron that I can rehab if the price is right. Lately, the used cast iron has been so expensive, it's cheaper to just buy a fucking lodge or go get one of those uh, that Mexican handmade cast irons, which are really great, and just season that. Then buy an old one, I have a brand new one, and it's I season it the way I want. So in any case, guys, keep an eye out on those deals with bad economic times. Look for the price changes, you know, look for those places you can get the discounts, you can get the deals. I'll talk to you later and I'll try and share some pictures if I find anything good. Y'all take care and be safe.